Huh? Well, this is a funny looking circuit board. So in this video, we're going to be taking this boring pedestrian push bike and we're going to be fitting it with an e-bike conversion kit. I'm going to show you how to install this on your bike, show you all the tools you need, and then at the end, we're going to see how it performs. So let's get into the video. These kits are available with different size motors, batteries, controllers and so on. I opted to use a 750 watt motor, Bafang C18 controller and a 52 volt 17.5 amp hour lithium battery. The kit also includes all the hardware for installation. Now if you're in the market for an e-bike kit and you're shopping around comparing prices you would know that this kit I have here isn't exactly your budget friendly entry level model. So if you pony up the extra cash to buy this kit set what are you getting for your extra dollars? Well by far and away the most expensive single component in any e-bike kit should be the battery. So let's crack this battery open and take a look at what cells it uses. After removing the pack, we can see these are Samsung 18650 cells. Googling the cell model number, we can look up the data sheet for these cells. When it comes to e-bikes, ideally you want cells that output high current. These cells have a continuous drain current of 8 amps per cell. My battery has a total of 70 cells, configured in 14S5P. If we quickly do the math, with 5 cells in parallel, we multiply 5 by 8, which equals 40 amps of continuous drain current. To find out the total power output of the battery, we simply multiply 40 by 52, which equals over 2000 watts of continuous power output. Pretty impressive. So this battery pack with its Samsung cells is pretty much the Rolls-Royce equivalent in terms of e-bike batteries. With this battery, you're going to get excellent performance, excellent range, and it's gonna last you hundreds of charge cycles, which should equate to thousands of kilometers on your e-bike. So in my opinion, it's worth spending the little bit of extra cash to get yourself a excellent battery to complement your e-bike conversion kit. So these e-bike conversion kits are made to be a universal fit as possible, but there's always some exceptions. Things to look out for in a push bike is you want a nice straight down tube like I have here. Some modern bikes, especially carbon fibre ones, they can have an S-curve in their down tube, and this can mean fitting the battery inside the frame is really tricky or sometimes even impossible. Another thing to look out for is the diameter of your bottom bracket. This is where the pedals and crank mount to the bike frame. They're fairly universal, but before you shell out any money for one of these kits, just check the manufacturer's website and take some measurements to compare for your bike to make sure it'll fit. Other than that, it's all pretty straightforward, so let's get into assembly. When it comes to tools, obviously you'll need the usual assortment of screwdrivers, hex keys and spanners. Apart from those, you'll also need a couple of specialised tools. I'll be using this bottom bracket removal tool, crank puller, and a chain breaker. I'd also recommend installing a new chain along with your e-bike kit. First remove both pedals. Take note that the left side pedal is a left handed thread.
Now we need to remove the chain, either by removing the master link if it has one, or by cutting the chain with a chain breaker. Remove the crank screw and use the crank puller to remove both cranks. Now I can remove the bottom bracket. If your bike has a front derailleur, you'll need to remove it. One side of the motor bracket has raised ridges. These need to be orientated inwards to the bike. Install the M6 screws, but leave them loose for the moment. Install the motor locking ring. To tighten the locking ring, a special spanner is needed which I have ordered but unfortunately hasn't arrived in time for this video, so I had to improvise with what tools I had on hand at the time. Now you can tighten the M6 screws. Before installing the cranks, take note that there is a left and right hand crank, so don't get them mixed up. Chances are your old bike chain will be the wrong length for the e-bike kit. And since I'm installing a new chain anyway, I'll give you a quick rundown on how to resize the chain correctly. First, wrap the chain around the largest rear sprocket. And around the front sprocket. For now, don't worry about threading the chain through the rear derailleur. Pull the chain tight around both sprockets and mark the closest inner link pin like I'm doing here. Remove the chain from the bike and count an extra two pins in length to allow for the rear derailleur. This is the pin I will be cutting at. Now the chain can be fitted to the bike. To join the chain I'll be using a master link. Since I removed the front derailleur, I won't be needing the gear shifter for it. In its place, I'll install the keypad. Mm -hmm. 
On the opposite side I installed the thumb throttle. If you have cable operated brakes you'll probably want to fit these new levers which have an internal brake switch. Or if you have hydraulic brakes you'll have to install these Hall effect sensors and magnets onto your existing brake levers. Install the sensor in a position close to the pivot point of the brake lever. The magnet should be installed on the brake lever approximately 2-3mm away from the sensor. Next I'll install the speed sensor onto the frame. Install the magnet onto an outside wheel spoke and position the sensor so there is about a 2mm gap between the sensor and magnet. Now we can install the battery holder onto the bike frame using the factory drink holder screws. Now we can start routing cables around the frame and connecting the sensors to the wiring loom. All the plugs are unique, making wiring as simple as plug and play. Now we can power on the display for the first time. Using the keypad we can change the motor assistance level, cycle through the trip computer and change various settings such as kilometers per hour or miles per hour, wheel size for speed calibration and many other settings. Before you hit the road I'd recommend you check the brake lever sensors are working correctly. Use the thumb throttle to engage the motor and pull the brake lever. If the sensor works correctly the motor should stop immediately. If it doesn't you may have to move the magnets further away from the sensor and try again. Right now we're all ready to go for a ride and see how it performs. I found the keypad incredibly useful for changing the pedal assistance level on the move. I found it particularly useful when I was tiring or needed a bit of extra help getting up a big hill. The LCD display has excellent viewing angles and is bright enough to read in direct sunlight. You also have the option to use the thumb throttle to motor along without pedalling at all. The motor has a good amount of torque and is easily able to pop a wheelie from a standing start. So what are my final thoughts on this e-bike conversion kit? Well let's start off with installation. 
Even though I was setting up cameras and lights and filming, it only took me about three hours to install on the bike. So if I wasn't mucking around with cameras and lights, you'd probably about halve that for an installation. So it's really quick and easy to do. You just gotta make sure you've got the right tools on hand to undo things like your bottom bracket and whatnot. As far as performance goes, honestly, I haven't ridden any other e-bikes to compare it to. However, you are looking at a guy that rides like 250cc motocross bikes, 700cc ATV quads, things like that, so I do know what performance feels like. And honestly, for a mountain bike, it's fantastic. It's really zippy. Uh, I am a well solid built bloke, I'm six foot tall, and it hauls me up a steep hill at like 15, 20 k's an hour without me pedaling. If I'm pedaling, then even faster. So. I think it's a blast to ride, it's really fun. Now a million dollar question that's probably on your mind is what range can you expect out of a single charge? And that's a great question and really there's no one size fits all answer for all the reasons I'll put up on the screen. There's just so many different variables that I can't just simply say well you should get uh, 70 kilometers out of a charge because there's really no one size fits all answer for that. But from what I can tell and the riding I've done you get tired or bored before the battery runs out, at least from my experience. And I've been blatting around uh, in our section, going up hills, full throttle, not pedaling, things like that, and the battery just lasts and lasts and lasts, so it's all good. Another great thing about this conversion kit is the speed controller is actually mounted inside the motor housing. And that's great because some other conversion kits you actually have another box that you have to mount somewhere on your bike frame which houses the motor speed controller so this is much more simple to install and it is a lot tidier uh, and it also saves a bit of room that would otherwise be taken up on the bike frame by a speed controller so that's another great feature there and full disclosure uh, this kit was sent to me free of charge however uh, i've tried to keep my opinion as open and honest as possible uh, they, they haven't paid me to say anything or not say anything, the thoughts are my own. Um, and there will be an affiliate link down in the description if you want to purchase one of these kits. If you do purchase it through my affiliate link, that gives me a small kickback at no cost to you and helps pay for more videos like this in the future. Other than that, I think that about wraps it up. Let me know if you'd like me to do another video maybe in like six months time after I've had uh, more seat time on the bike and give you a review uh, and let you know what I think after I've owned it for a while. So thank you very much for watching this video. If you liked it, give me a like, that would be much appreciated. If you want to see more videos like this, hit that subscribe button. And thanks to all my Patreon supporters for making videos like this possible. I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.